Does Texas A&M have a legit battle at the center position? You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefanek. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Hope everybody has an outstanding Friday. The weekend is here. But today, we're going to have a conversation about, is there a legit battle at center? And I think this is one of those where it's still to be seen, but I think that there's competition. I think there's a legit competition there. There are are talented players fighting for that spot. So, you know, Bryce Foster, of course, the incumbent, who we all assume is going to be the starting center for Texas A&M this season. He is away uh, with track and field. I believe he does the shot put, um, which, once again, I mean, read between the lines here. It it just when, When we heard Coach Elko talk about this, he didn't seem stoked. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. I've had some folks comment and say the same thing. And I, and we're not disrespecting Foster for uh, doing track and field. No disrespect at all. But as I say time and time again, the center position is one that these reps are incredibly valuable. You are the quarterback of the offensive line. You are pointing things out. You are letting folks know what they are supposed to be doing. And I know that he's been around. I know that he's he's played a lot of football for Texas A&M, but still, I just, I mean, this is a new system. This is a new coaching staff. I, him not being here in spring, is it the end of the world? No, but it definitely is a little bit frustrating. So I think looking at this, my head kind of goes, hey, we really need to have some folks step up in – Spring ball. And who have those two guys been? It's been the transfer, Dorian Hinton, and then TJ Shanahan. These two have been taking reps at center with Foster away from the team doing uh, track and field stuff. And both of these guys, Hinton, you know, is an experienced offensive lineman who who put up good numbers last year at FAU. And then Shanahan, you forget, I mean, he was a top 200 recruit in the 2023 class. This guy is no joke. This is a legit football player. So um, a lot of upside there, 6'4", 315 for Shanahan. Both of these guys are, are going to fight for this spot. We're going to see this in the spring game. I think we're going to see this all throughout the season. I, I don't know. I've seen a lot of articles about this. You know, is there a battle? It's There's definitely enough of a battle to have a conversation. But I just think if Bryce Foster was here, this really wouldn't be a conversation. He would be taking the reps with the ones, and we wouldn't be looking at it like, well, we're looking at it like this because he's not at practice. And I think the way that I kind of look at this is you have to think that Foster's going to come back and he's going to take over, and it's going to be his position. He's going to be the center for this team. But I do think that Hinton and Shanahan are talented players who could take over. Let's, ladies and gentlemen, let's not act like Bryce Foster is perfect last year. I mean, his season was okay. Wasn't great. Wasn't like terrible. It was okay. Um, You know, it was kind of that here's good, here's bad. It's in that middle range. I mean, it just was, it was what it was. And, you know, I think that. This position, it's just so important. The importance of the center position cannot be overstated. It all comes down to these guys, you know, picking up on things the defensive line is doing. You really have to help your other offensive linemen. This is the job of the center. It's why they're pointing. It's what they're doing there at center. So, and, you know, there's two schools of thought here. Some might say, well, Andrew, those reps, who cares? Those reps don't matter. And then some say, Andrew, he needs to be with the team. Why is he not with the team right now? This is not good. Not knocking two sport athletes. You know, I played two sports uh, through most of high school growing up. It's it's part of it. But then you go in college, I just played baseball. I mean, it's hard when you really want to focus on a craft. It's hard to focus on multiple things. It just is. 
So I'm a little frustrated the Foster's not out there. And once again, good for him for you know doing what he wants to do. I'm no knock to him. He made his decision. I respect him for doing that. Um, you know, a lot of folks went that come into a school playing multiple sports, they kind of just put it away. He wanted to continue to do track and field stuff. Good for him. Um, but I do think that this opens up a window for Hinton and Shanahan to try and prove themselves to this coaching staff to try and really, um, you know, get everybody feeling good about the center position. Now, I'll tell you this. Having seen seen these two guys play, uh, play some reps, and obviously just in practice, but I, I do feel better knowing that there's some hype around, hey, we have three legit guys, including Foster, who can play center. And I think that's important. You know, having multiple guys, we talk about it all the time. When we talk about offensive line, injuries happen all the time. We see injuries literally all the time. Players on the offensive line get hurt. You're getting into a mini car crash every single snap. So you're going to have some guys get banged up. And I think having – legitimate backups at each offensive line position is always going to be important. Sometimes football comes down to maybe not who's the best team, but who's the deepest team. You know, teams lose quarterbacks, teams lose running backs, lose offensive linemen. Who's got the most, who's got the most depth. That's sometimes when you get into that week 10, 11, 12 in the postseason, that's what wins football games. And so I think having a handful of guys who can come in and play the center position makes you feel better about it. But I will say this. Well, I'm not fully bought in that there is a battle at center. I am bought in that I'm really stoked to see these two play in the spring game, see what they have. Um, and, and here's the deal, because th th if they both play well and look good, knowing how good Texas A&M's defensive line is, there will be some smoke about, hey, if Foster isn't playing well in the summer, heading into the season, if he has a bad couple of games to start the year, Throw one of these guys in the game. And I think that that smoke could become fire at some point if, if Bryce Foster doesn't play good football. So that is definitely something I'm monitoring. So that's a position battle. Then let me know that in YouTube comments. I want to talk a little bit about the running backs before we move on to segment two. But let me know that in the YouTube comments, do you believe in this? I've seen in multiple articles, multiple Texas a and publications over these last few days saying, well, maybe there's a bit of a battle for the center position. And once again, I, I'm i not saying that's not true in the story, but I am saying I think that if Foster was here, it wouldn't really be a conversation we were having. So that's my thoughts on the center position. Let me know y'all's thoughts on this in the YouTube comments. I'm really curious to hear uh, what everybody has to say. Um I'm going to talk a little bit about running backs, and this conversation will likely carry a little bit in segment two. But looking – and the, oh, I, I want to read this quote real quick before, about the centers. So uh, Coach Klein said this about rotating centers throughout spring practice. It's really good that we have some competition there. It's really good that we, we're we uh, developing depth. I've met with Bryce Foster and certainly understand the situation. From what we want to do from a cadence and tempo standpoint, there's a lot of those guys. A lot There's a lot on those guys, as I just said. This is an important position. They're doing a lot. They're being asked to do a lot. So, you know, I mean, I, I know that Coach Klein's not going to come out and say, yeah, I wish he was, you know, I'm, I'm mad he's not here. He's not going to say that. But I, I do think this coaching staff wishes their more than likely starting center was out here um, at practice. So I think that's definitely frustrating. Um, And so running back room. We'll I just want to talk a little bit about I think that this competition is going – we're going to really – we're going to really see what's going on in the spring game. So we'll have a short conversation about that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you three gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from the other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as a Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing 
involves risk, including loss, limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in a good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. So short conversation about this running back room before we we get on to a few quotes we heard from players and coaches. Uh, we, we talked about some quotes from Coach Klein yesterday that were a little bit interesting, and that one about him discussing the centers was interesting as well. Um, but this running back room, I, I just wanted to say this. I think that we're going to see a lot of questions get answered about this room at the spring game. I just think it's going to be an eyeball testing. I have a feeling that some of these guys are going to separate themselves from the pack. So I expect that to happen at the spring game. Uh, and once again, it's going to be an open competition. And Coach Klein said, a quote we read yesterday, this is a room that multiple guys are going to get their reps. Multiple guys are going to, are going to get to, um, are going to, and we're talking in games. Like this is going to be a committee. This is not going to be one guy takes over. Now, while I believe that to be true, I still think you, you are going to see one guy kind of be the guy. You know, maybe it's 16 carries for that guy and, nine and seven for your other, you know what I mean? Like whatever ends up breaking up to, I do think you're going to see a lot of mouths get fed when it comes to this running back room. But I do still believe that one player is going to take over. I still think that Ruben Owens and Le'Veon Moss are going to be the guys. That's just my opinion right now. I'm anxious to see what changes and how that looks here in a few weeks. And that's, what's going to be really fun about the spring game coming up here in a few weeks. Um, I just wanted to share that. I was thinking about that earlier. Um, and so now we've got some quotes from DJ Hicks, Connor Wigman, and Coach Bateman. So DJ Hicks had a lot of great things to say. First thing he said, uh, this is talking about Texas A&M's new additions via the portal. He says, we have a lot of good players that came in. Rodos Johnson, a defensive tackle from Wisconsin, is a great guy. They're all great men and great people, and they love the game of football. You know, this isn't a super football Quote, this is kind of a, you know, brotherhood and, and, you know, love my teammates quote, but that stuff matters. And, and you know, we're not going to sit here and, and harp on this forever, but the reason I, I marked this quote is just because I, I just think having a team that's tight matters. And I'm not saying that this wasn't the case under Jimbo, but I just, I do think that coach Mike Elko is going to run things a little bit better. And so I think that DJ Hicks is a player who is a great person on and off the field, great football player, going to be a star this year. But um, I love hearing that this team, this defensive line room, as a unit, they're they're really close, and that stuff does matter. As a team, this team seems close. You can see that in videos. You can see it all over. So I just think that should give fans hope and belief that this team really can have a special season. Um. So, and then, you know, DJ Hicks was asked about what compelled him to stay at Texas A&M. And I'll add this, you know, a lot of these players had the option, you know, DJ Hicks, a guy as highly ranked as he was, he could have picked his school. He could have picked where he wanted to go. And when Coach Elko was hired, you know, everybody had that choice. Do I stay? Do I leave? Where do I want to go? What do I want to do? What's the plan from here? And you saw some players transfer. And no disrespect to them, you know, their, their coach left. They want to go find a new place to play. And no disrespect to some of those players. But, um, you know, the players that stuck it out and want to play for Coach Elko – I think that means a lot. And so this is what DJ Hicks had to say about that. He said, um, what, what compelled me to stay is Coach Mike Elko and the way I believe in Coach Elko. I just had to stay here and see what he could do for my future and my teammates around me. And once again, this isn't a super X's and O's tweet or uh, X's, X's and O's um, quote, you know, and, and that's true. But it is players believing in their coach and loving their coach and wanting to play hard for their coach matters. And, and once again, you can say it doesn't, it does. That stuff matters. And uh, Hicks likes his, likes his coach. He feels really good about his coach. And he says, that's why he stuck around. So, you know, coach Elko, we talk about building relationships, how important that is in recruiting and uh, keeping your players on roster. This is why that stuff matters. And I, everything I've ever heard about coach Elko from players, from recruits, he's a great guy and people want to play for him, and that stuff is really, really important. So um, 
DJ Hicks then goes on to say, I met Coach Elko right before he left for Duke. I came here. I was going into my sophomore year. I remember he was telling me the defense of breaking it down. I remember how smart he was, and I had never talked to someone who was that smart. You know, Coach Elko knows defense. Coach Elko preaches defense, teaches defense. Texas A&M's defense with him and Coach Bateman together, putting their minds together, it, it's going to be really special. And I think you've got the personnel to make it special, and you've got the coaching staff to make it special, and that should excite Texas A&M fans. Then this is uh, DJ Hicks talking about defensive coordinator Jay Bateman. Really talented. The first day I got here was the first day before the bowl game. And I remember watching him in the bowl game. Oh, excuse me. This is my bad. This is Jay Bateman talking about DJ Hicks. Excuse me. He says, you know, really talented. The first day I got here was the first day before the bowl game. And I remembered watching him in the bowl game. He is a tremendous kid and he works really hard. I think he has tremendous upside. I'm glad he's here. You know, Watching DJ Hicks play, there's no debate that the upside is through the roof. He's going to be a star. I think some people were, were quick to, you know, I mean, not, I'm not saying forget DJ Hicks, but he was a bit buried last year. Why? Because Texas A&M's defensive line was one of the best in college football. I asked Nick Saban, you know, and he praised this defensive line for minutes and minutes. I asked him that um, during an SEC uh, phone call a few uh, whenever before the matchup last year. And this was a really good defensive line. Hicks got buried in a good defensive line, and now it's his time to shine. Is he going to be a starter? Is he going to come? Is he going to be, um, uh, you know, coming in for snaps? It's still to be seen. But regardless, he's a really good football player who's going to be out there playing this year for the Aggies. And, and hearing that the D.C. feels good about it makes me feel a lot better. Um, now here's Coach Bateman on Terry and York, which is, I'm sure, always a great subject for these coaches. I'm sure they love to brag on York. I feel very fortunate to have Terry in here. I feel fortunate and blessed to coach him. He's always working. He has a lot of ability to. Really fortunate that he's here, and he'll be a big piece of our defense because he'll help us run things. York is just – it's amazing how much of a leader he's become y young into his Texas A&M career. He's a sophomore. And he's a leader on this team. You don't see that a lot. A lot of times it's the juniors and the seniors in the in the uh, sixth years that or fifth years. That is who are the leaders on a football team. And seeing that York is really a leader on this defense it is amazing to see. And there's no, no question that's why Bateman is raving on him because he's a great teammate. He's a great football player. He's going to make this team better on the field thanks to his play, thanks to his leadership. Terry New York is going to be a big reason why the Aggies, I think, are going to have an incredible 2024 season. So now on to kind of some quotes from uh, quarterback Connor Wigman, who we obviously hear locked on Aggies, as you ever dare is no believe will be the starting quarterback for the Aggies this year. This is him discussing his injury. So he says, um, and the, uh, the toughest part of it, he says, being away from the game, I love the game of football and having something you love taken away from you is tough mentally. You don't realize how much you love something until it's taken away from you. So I'm thankful to be back with my teammates. You know, I, Something about that, and you know, some of these quotes have been X's and O's. Some of them have been, you know, more uh, fluff stuff when it, in regards to players, relationships, that stuff. Connor Wigman, this that quote right there means a lot to me. I mean, I mean, you got to be devoted. You got to love your craft. You want to to wake up every day and say, "How can I get better at this?" And just hearing that quote, you know, Connor Wigman woke up every day with his injury, just saying, "I want to be out there playing football so dang bad." And I can't. And I think that that's going to leave a chip on his shoulder. He's going to take, he's not going to take a snap for granted this year. He's going to work his behind off to get ready for the season. And he's going to, I'm telling you, be an absolute monster for the Aggies. I'm really excited to see what Wigman does. Um, Wigman then went on to say, went on to say this about the receivers. They're stepping up, not just on the football field, but as leaders of the team as well. It's been fun to watch. Good to hear that. Um, Connor Wigman talking about playmakers. I feel like we have it all, and I'm excited to play with those guys. You know, like hearing that, tight ends, running backs, receivers, you want to have a group of, of really talented guys who can do a lot well. This is kind of what we're talking about Colin Klein. He's awesome. I'm trying to soak up as much knowledge as I can. This is interesting. This is kind of what we've been talking about, the new helmet communication um, that's going into place. He says, I love it. That thing is pretty cool. Having him in my ear telling me to play instead of looking to the sideline for signals has helped me. I think it will help us a lot. I'm excited to see what that looks like. So that's that's interesting. Um, 
And then this is kind of another quote from Wigman talking about Colin Klein. Physicality and toughness is what he preaches, and that's how he played. It's cool to see it coming out as a coach. No question, those who watched um, Klein play football agree there. And then Connor McMahon says this, receivers are always open. As a quarterback, you have to love that. Being able to play fast and get the ball out quick and getting it to your playmakers, that is going to be fun. It, you know, you get more excited about these receivers and tight ends and, and pass catchers every time you hear a quote like this from your, uh, you know, assumed starting quarterback. And then lastly, Connor Wigman says, Coach Elko left right when I got here, so he was here throughout my whole recruiting process. He was close to my parents. I was excited when he was named head coach, and he has hit the ground running. More praise for Texas A&M's head football coach who is going to have a really, really good year, and I can't wait to see it. The Aggies have a big, big series coming up on the diamond against the South Carolina Gamecocks on the road. We're going to break it down coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Game Time. Game Time, if you go get a ticket to a sporting event, to comedy, to a concert, anywhere else, you're crazy. Game Time is the best place to do it. It's where I get tickets to every event I ever attend. I'm going to a concert on Saturday night and or tomorrow night. And where did I get my ticket? Game Time. Incredible price, easy. And my favorite feature about Game Time, you can see your seat. Some you know, of the competitors have a, 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 a different version of this tool, and it just doesn't work the way Game Times does. Game Times' ability to show you where your seat gonna be is in the stadium, in the uh, music venue, is unmatched. It's incredible. It's accurate. Uh, I bought tickets to a baseball game. I saw exactly what my seat looked like, and I get to the game, and it's exactly what the – uh, image on game time showed it lets you move around see the state it's an incredible feature on an incredible app where you can also get your tickets cheaper than anywhere else you got to go check out game time i promise you take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on college for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-c-o-l-l-e-g-e for 20 dollars off download game time App today, last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So now I want to talk a little bit about this upcoming baseball series because it is a big one. When you are playing a talented team on the road, it's always an important series. I believe South Carolina is currently ranked number 22. It's the SEC. There's no such thing as a bad team. There are not bad teams in this conference. This is the best conference in all of college baseball, not even relatively close. So, you know, I mean, you've played, Texas A&M's played an Auburn team and a Mississippi State team that some would say are, you know, bottom end of the SEC. They'd be the best team in many other of the huge conferences in college football, I mean, college baseball. So um, you go to play South Carolina on the road. The Gamecocks are five and four in SEC play. They have two road series losses. They lose. Um, two games in Oxford against Ole Miss. They lose two games in Tuscaloosa against Alabama, but they did sweep Vandy at home. I believe the ballpark is called Founders Park. Um, and obviously it's been a, a good place for the Gamecocks so far in conference play as they as they swept an incredibly talented Vandy team at home. Um, looking at the numbers for South Carolina, you got two guys you need to look out for. You got, it's Cole Maring, I believe is his name, 10 bombs. And then you've got Ethan Petrie, incredible baseball player, kind of like Condon over at Georgia, really good player. Uh, batting 327, 12 home runs on the season. So those are the bats that you got to, you know, if you're the pitching staff, hey, watch out for these guys. And then the pitching staff, the pitching staff, they're giving them about 5.8 runs per game so far in conference play. And, you know, looking at this, the ERA for the staff is. Pretty solid, you know, and it seems like when when their staff and this is like kind of like, well, no, you know, no crap. But when when the staff doesn't give up a ton of runs, they're winning baseball games. They're winning close games. And then you'll see them lose one 12 five. And so, you know, um, the pitching staff was really good in their home series against Vandy. So you got to expect these pitchers to come out and look really good. It's a, it's a pretty good staff, low ERAs. So be ready for that. A lot of a lot of guys, a lot of different types of pitchers, finesse pitchers, strikeout pitchers. You got to be ready for whatever's coming to you. Of course, this will all be scouted, the scouting report, and all that. 
Um, so, I mean, my keys to a series win are Montgomery. Hey, this isn't rocket science. Continue to do what you're doing, man. You are incredible. Keep doing it. Uh, he currently leads Division One baseball. I saw this in um, RBIs, I believe, 51. Um, good for him. I mean, he's – there's no words to describe how good he's been. And then, you know, Jace Lavalette continued to hit the baseball and hit it very, very far. That will help you win baseball games. I think early runs – once again, this isn't you know uh, this isn't a rocket science take here, but when you're playing on the road, I think early runs are, are even more valuable because it just it, it deflates the crowd, it deflates the team. Go and punch them in the mouth in the first three innings, make it a four two five one game. You know what I mean? Game. Go get a couple run lead, a two three four run lead. It it it, it really deflates a team, and then of course every home team is going to make their push. But I think that's takeaway. Crooked numbers, a lot of crooked numbers that helps. Always, especially on the road. And then answer. If you get punched in the mouth and in in, it's a 0 0 game, and then the bottom of the second, South Carolina scores three runs, score three in the top of the third, score two in the top of the third. Don't let momentum, you know, don't let them put up two runs, their pitcher come out and get three quick outs, and then they're back in the dugout hitting, feeling really good about themselves. Don't do that. If they punch you, answer. This team's been really good at that so far this season, but it's a trend that needs to continue in this series. This is a huge series. I feel like this is going to be a, a real, we're going to get a real feel for this team from this series. If you go win this thing on the road against a talented South Carolina team, I mean, just my confidence for this team being able to win the whole thing just is going to continue to grow. Fun series coming up. Really excited to see. So important baseball this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. So be ready to rock and roll for that. That's going to do it for this weekend for this week here at locked on Aggies. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, it helps the show a ton hit the like button on YouTube helps a lot as well. And then if you're listening on a podcast platform, leave a five-star review also helps the show really appreciate y'all every day. everybody that's here listening. I really appreciate it. I hope everybody has an outstanding weekend and we will see you on Monday.